Oh, hey, you're watching Colt Eastwood, so don't take it personal, you pansies. Hey, it's Colt Eastwood. We're in a really weird spot right now with gaming, and part of it has to do with the transition from standard HD gaming, you know, the 1080p stuff, moving up to 4K gaming, and this VR revolution that's starting. One of the things that comes with 4K gaming is HDR. And the reason why I say it comes with 4K gaming is because experts say that without HDR in your 4K content, you're not really seeing the benefits of 4K gaming. HDR, and a lot of people don't understand HDR. They use HDR as a bragging right. I have HDR. I'm getting to TV with HDR. My console has HDR. We know it's better colors. We know it's better blacks. It's better whites. But you have to understand graphically what HDR does, and it's very cool. But it comes at a price. Now, I get scoffed at when I say things like, if you buy an HDR 4K TV, half of that cost of your TV is basically the HDR component. That sounds crazy, I know, but look at it this way. I can get a 50 inch 4K TV for about 500 bucks or 600 bucks. But if I want to get a 50 inch HDR 4K TV, we're starting at $1,000. Why is HDR so great? What HDR does is brings a wider gamut of color range that isn't possible on a standard 4K or a standard 1080p TV. Now, I work in graphics. I've done this for about eight years. I've worked in Photoshop. I worked in video production. And you have to understand things like exposure and pixels when they work together. So when a shot is underexposed or overexposed, the highest range of brightness and pixels like the whites or the lowest in the blacks gets lost in the transition and the gradient from very dark to a visual pixel that you can see. What a standard TV does is it is limited to that range of darkness or lightness and washes those pixels together and you miss detail that you wouldn't see. Do you need to see the very undershadowed part of a bush? Okay, you can't take that part sexually. <laughs> Please don't. But yes, you do need to see it. No, you don't have to see it, but it's an enhancement to the visuals and a better clarity, and you get a smoother and a better picture. These things come at a cost. It takes processing, it takes requirements, it takes hardware. And an argument that I've had with my friends about HDR is that they claim that their old TV will get patched for HDR. And you know what? They're right. The big manufacturers like Samsung, Vizio, Sony, they have all promised their consumers that bought TVs a couple years ago that they will be patched HDR. Sound familiar? Well, it's the same thing that Sony has said to their PlayStation 4 owners. But in true Sony fashion, the way they skirt around the issue is that they say, and I don't have the exact quote, HDR is called by many different terminologies throughout the industry, like high dynamic color, high range color, virtual color, plasma color, virtual high range color, plasmatic orgasmic color, HD color density wide gamut version mode. Now he said something to that effect. He listed off like eight or nine different terms that sound like HDR, but existed before true HDR. HDR is a 2016 and on thing. That's why now you're seeing HDR TVs. You can flip through your TV manual and just, and look and see if HDR is possible with your TV but that's up to the manufacturer if they're going to patch it in. But like I said, this is the patch, just like PlayStation 4 is getting. It is an HDR-like mode. But the important thing to keep in mind after all the bashing that I've done is that HDR, when we're talking about a patch to your TV or to your console, it's a free feature. You're not allowed to complain about free. That's what I've been saying lately. You're not allowed to complain about backward compatibility on Xbox. You really shouldn't make fun of the 250 games there because Microsoft isn't charging you to access the feature. And I named off 45 excellent classics that are totally awesome and got a lot of gamers happy to watch the montage. So you can't complain about a feature if it doesn't cost you anything. You can just say, well, I can choose not to use it or I'm on a platform that doesn't allow it. And what people don't understand, they're all ready to rush out and buy the first HDR 4K TV they can find. And what they don't realize is that there is a chart. There's a chart that you have to look at that if you sit far enough away from your TV, they tell you 
don't buy a 4K TV because you'll never see a visual advancement from 1080p to 4K. Now in my room, I sit about eight feet away from my TV. Do you know what Consumer Reports says? The size that I need to buy to experience the advantages of paying for a 4K TV? Take a guess. Take a guess what size. 75 inches. Do you know how much that costs? And for what? For bragging rights? Honestly, how many times do your friends come over and stand and look at your TV and go, Holy crap. Oh my gosh, the pixel density. <sighs> Pants tight. Pants tight! Colt, why do you care? Why do you care about how I spend my money? Well, I don't know why I do. Because I honestly do. I do care about how other people spend their money. It's actually very immature. But it comes from a long, long history of mine of not having a lot of money. I come from a generation where I didn't ask my parents for money. So I don't just go out and buy a $60 game. I'm not the type of gamer to say, well, who cares what reviews say? Reviews are just opinions and Metacritic's just crap. I'm not going to go buy a $60 game just to give it a shot. No, it's just being a smart consumer. you got to read about this stuff. Don't come to me and tell me what HDR is if you haven't read about it. And don't come to me about video game development and give your fanboyish opinion if you haven't read anything. What do you guys think I do all the time? I'm reading about this stuff. I read all the articles. I watch the videos. I listen to opinions. I listen to experts. I read up on the technicalities of what HDR and 4K. Before I go and drop a thousand bucks, I want to know what the heck this stuff's going to do. I know it's good, but I got to weigh those things. It just drives me crazy that people say, well, who cares? Metacritic's trash anyway. What? Okay. I you know that Metacritic compiles all of the industry reviews. It's the same thing as saying, all my friends say Gears of War is great, so I'm going to buy it. Well, okay. I mean, you trust your friends. There's people that trust reviews, and there's a reason why people trust reviews. It's not because they think that company's great. Did it ever occur to you that people trust certain reviewers because they agree with them on the games that they rate well, and they bought them, and they agreed, yes, everything they said. It was in line with my opinion and my personality and my gamer type. That's a great segue in for my last subject. And this really floored me and surprised me in such a good way that Phil Spencer spoke up about reviews. And most of his interview had to do with two games, ReCore and Forza Horizon 3. But the cool thing about ReCore, that ReCore wasn't pushed and overhyped. Microsoft wasn't doing a last ditch desperate effort to push the game out and get people to buy it. I think Microsoft knew that the game was just good and they weren't gonna push it and fall into the same traps that some of the other games have, like No Man's Sky. Push the game as hard as it deserves. And then you don't have to take the backlash if it fails. Phil Spencer's interview, he said that he was more than happy with the way it sold and the reception from fans despite it getting a 63% on Metacritic. He says, I think there's certain reviews that are written more to get clicked on than they are to actually accurately reflect the quality of the game, and that kind of bums me out." End quote. I agree with Phil Spencer on this, and I've said it before. I've said that I think IGN and GameSpot sometimes will bash a game harshly because they know they'll get ad revenue. I don't think that these reviewers will review a game poorly on purpose, just for clicks, but I think a controversial, lower than normal score is totally acceptable for them. He continues, on the reviews, honestly, I thought some of the reviews were a little harsh in terms of their view on the game. Now, this interview took place right before Gears of War 4 got a 7 out of 10 on GameSpot. And if you go on that video, there's an equal parts thumbs up and equal parts thumbs down. When I last checked, it was about 1,000 each. That's a biting review that will get a huge reaction and a huge traffic merge onto their YouTube channel. A little backlash never hurt anybody at a place like GameSpot. Phil Spencer admits there were problems with ReCore. He added that low scores have pissed him off and it haven't accurately reflected the end product. And then he referenced a 4 out of 10 for Forza Horizon 3. We're very proud of how the game ended and I think 7, 8, 9, like anywhere in there is fine. I mean, somebody gave Forza Horizon 3 a 4. I would give Forza Horizon 3 on PC. I would drop that score from a 9 down close to a 4 because of the optimization problems, but I'm going to get into that in a different video. I thought it was really interesting, and like I said in the very beginning, we're in a really weird spot for gaming, and 
We've got the remasters, we've got VR, we've, we've got the rough transition to 4K, we've got Sony. They've got that four years in the can. I'm gonna give it to them in the can in a minute. And Xbox is supposed to come out on top. And a year from now, will it matter by then? I can't help it. We get bored and we just fight with our friends. We fight with our fellow gamers. It's what we do. Now, last night I responded to someone who commented on one of my videos. And the person yelled in all caps, Oh my gosh, I'm so excited you actually responded. I'm trying not to wake everybody up in the house. And I wrote back immediately. I said, of course I responded. We're a gaming community. That's what it's about. I don't do this stuff to talk to myself. I already have to talk to myself to a microphone. But yeah, in the comments, let's have a discussion. Let's talk about it. I talked about HDR TVs. I talked about reviews. Let me know. I want to hear your opinion, guys. Thanks for watching the video. I'll see you guys soon.